at first he's uh, very distraught after he kills Dicky, but a week later he's wearing Dicky's clothes and he bought a new apartment with Dicky's money and he's just living it up as Dicky Greenleaf, happiest he's ever yeah. been. So the brilliance of his plan is yes, um, he kills Dicky, but um, he uses his his um his innate ability to impersonate to to make it seem as though Dicky is just living somewhere else. So he's he ends up playing both Tom Ripley and Dicky Greenleaf depending on who he's in a situation with. Yeah. So again, Tom Ripley is very smart. Yeah. And he he figures out a way to get out of the situation. But the biggest crux in his plan is when Philip Seymour Hoffman shows up. Freddie, Freddie, Freddie Miles. Who and he like this is an early uh, Hoffman movie. And since he's obviously immensely talented, he steals every scene he's oh, in. He's so good in this he's movie. So, he's so funny, and he's just like this arrogant, suave, like egocentric American who's just like thinks he's the hot shit in, in Europe. You know what I mean? Where, where's a corduroy jacket in Italy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tom, we're just talking about you. Tommy, 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 Tommy. And, and <laughs> Freddy is everything that Tom hates in people. He's yeah. loud, obnoxious, unattractive, self-centered, and incredibly arrogant to think that he's the ticket of the talk of the town in Italy. And he can't believe that um, Dickie actually enjoys being with Freddy. And again, jealous of Freddy because Dickie chooses Freddy over him. And also, Freddy kind of sees through Tom immediately. Mm-hmm. He he immediately doesn't like Tom. Yeah, there's that great scene where him and Dicky, Freddie and Dicky are listening to jazz in that yeah. little booth and uh they're about to go meet friends, but mm-hmm. Tom really wants to tour Rome with Dicky like Dicky promised him. Yeah. But then uh Dickie tells him just go on and enjoy yourself then he goes back to the booth and there's this great take of, of Philip Seymour Hoffman he's just, just, at just dancing but he's just staring directly through Tom Ripley yeah. and he's you can just imagine what he's thinking in his head yeah like he ha- he has pity for Tom yeah like Hoffman just portrays so much with his eyes in that shot yeah. it's just phenomenal and which is brings us to the point where Dickie's been missing for so long and then uh, Freddy um, goes to uh, what he thinks is Dickie's apartment. He finally tracked down Dickie mm-hmm. and finds Tom there wearing clothes that Dickie likes to wear. And this is where immediately Freddy can see right through Tom's facade. He doesn't obviously know he's a, 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 a serial killer, a sociopath, Not but yet. he knows that something's up. And he and this is uh, the first time where Tom can't lie his way out of a situation, mm-hmm. which leads to... Tom eventually killing Freddie Miles. Yeah, so Tom is on this killing spree to cover up loose end after loose end yeah. after loose end. And it's so fascinating to see because you're right. The first part of the first half of the movie, he doesn't kill anybody. Yeah. In the second part of this movie, this guy is just murdering everybody <laughs> in the social circle. He's about to be the only person in this group of friends. <laughs> so why does Tom Ripley imitate people and steal identities? Because he thinks that he himself is worthless and doesn't have an identity. So he's never felt whole as a person. And so when he in, in impersonates another another human being, he feels like he has improved himself. Exactly. He's just full of self-hatred. Yeah. Tom hates himself, never wants to be himself, and would much rather be living someone else's life. Yeah. Um, things begin to settle down pretty quickly, and he meets Peter. And Peter becomes this... This man who Tom feels like he can establish a, a, a intimate relationship with, um, they don't say it, but Peter is uh, definitely gay. Yeah, Peter's a homosexual, yeah. and Tom Ripley is a closet, closet homosexual, homosexual, basically. And so, but what happens is Tom finally finds this man who has similar interests to him, and Tom feels as though, oh, he can finally open up to someone and be Tom Ripley, the real Tom Ripley, with another person. But what happens is. Because of Tom's actions in the beginning of the story, and because of him lying to to uh, Kate Blanchett's character, Marge, not Marge, um, Meredith. So him lying to Meredith in the beginning of the film and establishing that relationship with her, what happens is on a boat trip with Peter, which is supposed to be a great getaway and a romantic um, weekend with Peter. This is the end of the movie too. The end of the film. Um, he Tom runs into Meredith. Now, Meredith thinks that he's Dickie Greenleaf, and Peter thinks that he's Tom Ripley, and they're on the same boat, but Meredith hasn't seen Peter yet. She thinks she saw him. She mentions to, to Tom, oh, is uh, Peter here? And that's when uh, Tom is like, it's over. And so this leads him, he has to kill Peter, because otherwise, if Meredith and Peter run into each other, his, he's up, because they think he's different people. So his, his jig, the jig would be up. So he has to go back to the, to the, um, the cabin and murder 
the one person that he felt that he could have had a true relationship with and the one person he could have been himself with. I'm going to disagree with you here. I don't think Tom sees Peter as someone that he could settle down with and have a relationship with. I think because we've we've seen Dick, I mean, we've seen what Tom does and what he does to imitate people and what he does to get into people's lives and steal their identities and everything. I think he's clearly using Peter as a mark. And you can kind of tell this when he's playing the piano at Peter's apartment and he seems like like Peter's off camera in, in another room and, and Tom, you can tell he's just kind of lying through his teeth. He's trying to make himself feel vulnerable. I think he's being fake vulnerable to put on an act. I think he's putting on an act for Peter to make feed, Peter fall for him so that he can eventually, he'll, he'll use Peter to get away from his situation. But eventually, he's going to get rid of Peter and move on. He's going to kill Peter eventually. I, so yeah. Personally, I think that... Yes, he'll he'll use him for intimate reasons, but I don't think he's using him to to have a relationship, and I think he's he's going to be expendable to him at some point. So I I disagree with you. I understand your point, but I think because before he kills Peter, right before he kills him, he says, I, I guess I'm just going to be stuck in the dark, which means he'll never he'll always have to be this fake version of himself. Yeah, but he's also and then he also weeps as he kills Peter. But he's also saying that because he's trying to to make. To have Peter's defenses as low as possible that, mm. so that he can strangle him. Yes, I think he has feelings for Peter, but I don't think he has long-term feelings for him. I, I think he's a stepping stone for him to keep getting what he wants. I disagree, but... Hey, hey we can disagree. It's, okay. yeah. it's good to differ, interpret different things. This is the first time things. we disagree yeah, about we're usually, we're usually on point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But then, so after the after killing Peter, it leads to one of my favorite shots of the movie where he's where Tom's sitting in the cabin, and then there's a, there's a closet door with a mirror on it, and it's it's opened, and because of the swaying of the boat, the door is opening and closing, and it's showing this reflection of Tom, and it's moving back and forth, and Tom's just sitting there. It he's distraught after what he just did, and that's actually the it's a bookend of the film. That's the first shot you see in in the movie is Tom Tom's reflection in the cabin after murdering Peter. You don't know what he did, but yeah. he's it's that shot with the voiceover. Yeah, the if voiceover. I go go back and take everything back, yeah. And, and scribble out my entire life or something like that. Exactly. And then there's also another shot that I think is amazing, which is after he um, after he kills Freddy and gets away with it, Tom decides to quit the charade of being Dicky, um, and he's just gonna be Tom from now on. And so what happens is he he's in his apartment and he has a black grand piano and he closes the piano, and then you see two reflections of his head. One's upside down and one's right side up, and the heads are joined. And then what Tom does, since he's breaking free of Dickie Greenleaf, he backs away and both the reflections separate from each other. Yeah, I love that shot. become two people. It's one of my favorite shots, it, too. It's unbelievable metaphor for who, what he's doing. Yeah, because just before that, it's just this great part of the film where he's putting on this intricate act of being both Dickie Greenleaf and Tom Ripley. Yeah. And not only is he being interrogated by police as Dickie Greenleaf, he has to deal with Gwyneth Paltrow as Tom Ripley, yeah. and also Peter as Tom Ripley, and, and then he's he, also dating Kate Blanchett as Dickie Greenleaf. Yeah, and he goes to the opera with Dickie Greenleaf, where where as where, Dickie Greenleaf. So so he goes to the opera with Kate Blanchett with Meredith as Dickie Greenleaf, but accidentally bumps into Marge, Marge, and Peter at the opera too. So he's he's doing this balancing act of both characters, yeah. where he's impersonating Dickie and being Tom Ripley. But also at the same time stealing Dickie's life, mm. and then it's just this great, great counter of being interrogated by the Italian detectives, and then he, like you said, he has to give up the jig because the heat's becoming too much. But he did such a good job tying up loose ends, and such a good job creating alibis for Tom Ripley, mm. for himself, and for Dickie Greenleaf that he's able to just blend back into Tom Ripley's existence, which depresses him. Yeah, and <clears throat> and the plan only ever works because rather than just killing Dickie and just putting his body in the ocean, and then just leaving, to being able to make people believe that Dickie's still alive is what helps him get out of it because what ends up happening is all the murders that have occurred, um, Dickie Greenleaf becomes the main suspect. So when Tom just becomes Tom, he's in the clear now. Even Peter thinks that uh, yeah. Dickie Greenleaf killed Tom Ripley and yeah. he's murdering everybody up in Italy. So it was a perfect crime because he made his he made the, he made made the a dead person the prime suspect in a series of murders in Italy. So there's no way Tom would ever be suspected again. Yeah, and then he gets away with it. The the movie not ends. only not only does he get away with it, but Dickie Greenleaf's father gives him some of Dickie's trust fund money. Yeah, he gets part of his inheritance. Yeah, it's insane because things just work out. What have again things work out for Tom Ripley in in the past, uh, which we learned from Dickie Greenleaf's um, father's investigator. 
is that Dickie Greenleaf has history of violence against people yeah. uh, and a drunken history of violence and put people in hospitals. And that's why he was in, in Italy to begin with, yeah. to exile from America from investigations mm -hmm. of uh, assaulting people. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he gets away scot-free, except for, Mar for Marge it's, still thinks it was him yeah. and knows it was him and ends kicking and screaming yeah. being taken away. But this movie, somehow, we were just blessed to get this movie with so many amazing actors before their primes, yeah. before their fame, all still very young and raw talents, and everyone in this movie is phenomenal. Yeah. It's um, just a Jude treat Law to watch. Jude Law got an Oscar nomination for he's this. He's so good in this movie. Yeah. It's one of my favorite Jude Law roles he's, ever. He's unbelievably charismatic and cool and um, like intoxicating, and he plays, like Marge says it herself, like when when Dickie Greenleaf is giving you his, his attention, you feel like you're the only person in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you've never seen this movie, definitely go see it. Go watch it. If you've seen it but haven't really given it a, a good watch, shut your phone off and watch this movie. It's it, on Netflix. Just put it on. It's beautifully shot. The whole thing pretty much takes place in Italy. Mangiabello doesn't exist. It's made up for the film and the story. But um, it's it's shot. It's 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 wonderful. I think it's one of the most stylish movies ever. It's amazing. The, the clothing, everyone's dressed so cool. Um, the location, set design, the music. It's a great, great yeah. artistic endeavor they've they carried out. It's a, it's a wonderful watch. And again, top 15 in my list all time of Hell my yeah. favorite movies. Not best of all time, but my favorite movies.